Attacking! Unit ready. Unit lost. Vehicle confirmed. Building. New rally point ready, established. Ready, 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 ready. Position. Building. Moving. Unit ready. Acknowledged. Bearing set. Waiting moving. Orders. Unit ready. Changing moving. position. Changing position. Unit ready. Vehicle reporting. reporting. Waiting moving. Moving. Okay. Ready. All miner under attack. Waiting Unit moving. ready. ready Construction complete. Confirmed. Cancelled. Waiting orders. All miner Vehicle under attack. Reporting. Unit ready. All miner under attack. Unit lost. Or miner under attack. Unit lost. Or miner under attack. Unit ready. Unit lost. Unit lost. Or miner under attack. Unit lost. Building. Target acquired. Unit lost. Unit ready. Unit Location lost. Ready, Iron curtain ready. ready. Unit ready, lost. Vehicle ready, ready Or miner under attack. Ready, ready, Unit ready. Our base is under attack. Ready, 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 ready. Unit ready. Our base is under attack. Ready, Unit ready. ready. Unit lost. Unit ready. Our base is under attack. Structure sold. Unit lost. Building. Structure sold. Our base is under attack. Unit lost. Vehicle reporting. Unit ready. Ready, Vehicle reporting. Changing position. Moving. Moving. Unit ready. Changing position. Unit lost. Select target. Warning. Iron curtain activated. Unit lost. Unit lost. Unit promoted. Unit lost. Countering enemy. Unit promoted. Unit promoted. Unit lost. Building. Moving. Changing position. Ready, Comrade. Unit lost. Unit ready. Player defeated. You are victorious.
All right, uh, I'll give this shot. Give this a shot. We have what is it? Miko's already rushing. Miko's is on pink Soviet and Marsh Purple America. So we can see early on some pressure probably with tanks. AFC up, he's gonna go quick Rocketeers, make sure to defend himself with some air. Yeah, this beautifully made map from uh, Josh. It's actually one of my favorite maps, of course. Ooh, a S Soviet rush, complete rush. He sold his MCV, which gives him an extra uh, $1,000, no, 2000 2000 yeah, 2000 So he's just gonna pump up dogs and, <laughs> oh man, this is like a rematch, right? From the one last games that we played it's Marsh against Mikos, which was about a thousand dogs each. See, uh, the dogs coming through. It's gonna be a really close game. Oh man, I don't know. I don't even know. Look at this tank fight. It's such a reckless tank fight. <laughs> I don't even know who was gonna win that. Looks like Mikos has this in the bag though. If he can defend this flak, he has it. Oh. I'm probably gonna see a little more Rocketeers now since he killed the flak. Yeah, this is a really good map. They both ended up selling MCV though. This normally plays out a pretty long game. Oh, paratroopers from Marsh. I don't think Mikos realizes it. Oh, there it is. He sees it. Would have been such a bad play if you didn't see that. One survives. So right now we have three miners versus two miners, and Marsh has his uh, refinery right next to his ore, so he's probably in the advantage right now. If he sticks around and plays a little bit slower, I think he's going to end up winning this. Uh, Mikos has to long distance farm from here on out, or long distance, long distance mine, sorry. I'm used to playing League of Legends normally call it farming. So, uh, Miko's is gonna have to pressure pretty early on here. This could still go either way though. As long as Marsh holds this uh, this next push, I think he wins this for sure. All he has to do is hold it. Ooh, another pair of drops. This time's a little further back so that Miko's doesn't see him. And I don't think he did see him. And this is good game. The only way he can defend himself now is with his miners defend those, or else that's game by the pair drops. He needs to send those miners back and the flags. Oh my god! Such a close game. It looks like Marsh wins this though. Oh, <laughs> he injured the refinery. I didn't even see that. Oh my god, that was a really good play.
Yeah, the fodder, man. <laughs> the fodder's fantastic. I mean, this, these fights, I mean, when they go in, you have no idea who's going to come out on top. It's just ridiculous. There's like 10 dogs, 20 dogs each. And they just go in, and the thing about fodder is that it's really unpredictable sometimes. Because dogs are based off of dog luck. Yeah, unless you're Mikos, then you have absolute. Well, actually, you know what? Mikos and Marsh, they're, they're both known to build like a shitload of dogs. About five dogs per tank, so. They're the only ones who know how to control these things, apparently. When I try to do it, it doesn't come out as good as I want to. Uh, there's times where it's just like, you get really lucky and you have. You go in with 50 dogs, you come out with 40 dogs. So. There's times where you go in 50 dogs versus 10 dogs and you'll come out with zero dogs. This is a really small map. Uh, it's pretty open though. Uh, normally, I say that this is more of in favor of Soviets. But Marsh, Marsh really does like playing small maps. He's pretty used to the pressure. So he can hold pretty good. But I don't know if he can hold... Mikos' attacks. Mikos is pretty damn aggressive. He's really good at rushing. You can see from last game. Yeah. Yeah, Marsh is the allied version of Mikos. Right now, we just have the dogs scouting pretty much. Scouting the whole map. Making sure that they have vision all around the map so that they don't get hit by the split. Or an NG, which naturally top players don't really NG themselves or NG opponents. Uh, last game was except, uh, an exception, I think, because he brought his MCV's NG. When you sell your MCV, you normally get an engineer off of it. So he walked it all the way across and ended up NGing his refinery to actually keep him alive and win the game. It was a really good play. So they have two miners each right now. Both of them went zero. Zero miners off War Factory, which means that they're just going to produce tanks really quick. They want to have more tanks than the other guy. Obviously. Uh, next thing that I can see Marsh doing is getting his airport, <laughs> Air Force Command and start pumping out Rocketeers. Nikos is already prepared for it. He already has his two flags out. And now comes the dogs. So the best thing, yeah, the best thing to do uh, normally for allied is just to sit back and keep building up. If they're not pressuring you, I mean, you're gonna have the advantage later on. But you always have to be prepared for that push. Soviets are known to just do like. They're one manpower, you know, like they just one fucking, I guess, group of tanks and just destroy everything. When you see uh, Soviets versus Soviets, it's, it doesn't normally go like that. It doesn't go with one group of tanks against another group of tanks. It's normally like splits uh, because you want to, you know, pick your team opponent off. And actually, uh, I suggest splitting against Allied even more because their tanks are weaker, so they lose a lot of power. Here we see uh, the dog war. We're not even going to say a tank battle. We're going to say a dog war. Whoever wins a dog fight wins a tank fight. Pretty even so far. This hut really helped around. I don't know if he can come back from this. Marsh does a good push here. He can actually just take the win right here. He does have a couple injured tanks though, so this might actually not be as bad for Nikos. A couple sentry guns uh, pretty much counters this next push. The sentry gun baits it. Yeah, he, he seems like he's fine. 
Uh, Marsh ended up selling his MCV, did he? Oh no, he moved it down here. So, yeah, Marsh definitely is an advantage here. He has three different ore patches where he's mining from against two for Mikos. And he's running out of ore over here, so he's going to have to do something pretty soon. Either move his MCV up top, or just sell the MCV and rush in with all his miners or something. Here's the free pair drops, America's special ability, I guess. Dropping it behind him at his oil. Hoping that Mikos doesn't see it. Uh, he's making a name art. Uh, I don't know why. He doesn't have a battle lab or anything. He can't really do anything with that. Is he preparing himself just in case? Just in case our Marsh makes a name we are more out? I don't know. It's really questionable. There's a split from Marsh, actually. Oh, the dog horse. Ended up winning the dog. He's not using the fodder anymore. There it is. Uh, at this point, the best thing he can do is just split. He needs to split. He only he only needs like two, three tanks to cover these four tanks with Soviet. Soviet tanks are a lot stronger. He needs to take some of these things out. Oh, Marsh mistake here. Hopefully, hopefully they can recover both and have another good battle. Dogs are pretty much just gonna win the game here. Wow. Disastrous battle, I have no idea what's going on here. He sent his whole army back so he could kill that bear drop. But he ended up using a lot of tanks for it actually. So close, oh my god, you can see the fodder. The tanks are just shooting the fodder. It's extremely hard to go around this fodder. You can see the game. This battle shouldn't have been this close. And actually, Mikos comes out on top because of that. It's all those dogs, but that battle is pretty much pointless now. Uh, Mikos is left with zero miners, zero production. He doesn't have anything else but these three tanks. Marsh still has a complete base, so. For those of you who didn't uh, watch the last series, uh, a couple months back, I'm going to say maybe, I think it was December December or November, uh, these two players right here uh, ended up playing uh, in the tournament, in the quick match uh, ladder. Uh, one of them got, um, got rank 1, but he wasn't supposed to get rank 1 because someone actually gave him free wins or something. So last month or the month before, they actually had to replay their match. A best out of five to see who was going to take the number one spot for that November uh, ladder, and it was a really close series. I believe it was was it a best out of five or best out of seven? I'm not sure, but uh, they won. It was a tie game up until the last uh, up until the last game. They're pretty evenly matched uh, so far. You see one win versus one win, and last time, like I said, it was like four four. And I think it ended up 5-4 in favor of Marsh. Marsh ended up winning that. So I can consider this like a classic game. These two players, they they play so much alike. And they, they always provide really good and close games. Yeah, the dogs were, I, um, in my opinion, I think they were intended to uh, scout maps and just to kill infantry. But over the years of Red Alert, the dogs have been known to like take good amount of damage from tanks. So they pretty much serve as a decoy, as uh, a shield. So the more dogs you have, sometimes <laughs> the better it is for you. Other times though, I mean you have to think, each dog costs $200. So if, if you make, let's say, 10 dogs, you're already spending 2k, which you can have another War Factory. You know, and if you have another war factory, you can produce tanks faster. So, it all depends on what your gameplay is all about. You can't just build like a bunch of 
more factories and a bunch of dogs, you have to choose what you what you're gonna go with. Typically, that's why you see a lot of people sell their MCVs, and then once they sell their MCVs, they get the extra 2K, so they just pump a lot of dogs out after having two wars. Uh, this is this is a pretty big map. This is a new map. Uh, probably not gonna see a rush here. You see, already both of them went either one miner at least. Miko's right away moved his MCV to get these gems. Gems are worth two times as much as the gold, so he wants to get that gold right away or get that money right away. Uh, I think the last time I played him on here, we had a really good, long, close game. Uh, I think at one point we each had like six war factories, so I think this is going to be a long game as well. Allies do prevail in long games. Well, they don't prevail, but they are a little bit better in long games. They have more uh, more units to utilize as opposed to Soviets. Soviets normally just, I guess, good units are tanks and flax just for defense. But typically that's all you have to do is make tanks. And for Allies, you got uh, Grizzly tanks, you got planes, you got Rocketeers, you got Mirage tanks, you got Prism tanks. I mean, you got spies. You can spy your opponent and get... Uh, promoted tanks or promoted uh, infantry so long games allies do have a big advantage and Soviets have an advantage of close maps short uh, small maps so You see Marsh already utilizing his allied power, making rocketeers, making planes, and Miko is all he can do right now is just defend himself. Those desolators are really strong though, I mean, if the opponent uh, makes mirage tanks and prism tanks, even these grizzly tanks with a bunch of dogs, uh, if a Soviet player can land a really good, like, a good, uh, Dessel Bomb. A Dessel Bomb is when you put de these Desolators right here into a flak and just run them into your opponent's tanks and deploy right away. They'll, all the tanks will melt right away. Well, they, Grizzly tanks, uh, they get weak really fast, but Mirage tanks just pretty much pop. They just pop. And they die. You'll see how fast these Grizzly tanks, uh their health but this is going to be enough for them to take uh, these MCV. Um, they're losing health quite fast but they did with their job. It was only six tanks and they pretty much destroyed all of Miko's future builds. He can't, can't build anything else without his MCV. He can't build buildings I should say. He can build just off of these two <coughs> war factories now. Uh, we saw a quick tech from Marsh. He already has Mirage tanks. He has Rocketeers. This is definitely going to go in favor of Marsh as of now. But like I said before, he's already pumping in his Desos. He already has his Flax. If he lands a good Flax, a good Deso Bomb, uh, this actually could still be Mikos' game. Typically, the Soviets are the ones who pressure and give a little more of a more of a fight at the start. And Nikos was just sitting back. He he needs to push up a little bit more. Saw so, uh, Marsh. He ate all the gems so fast. And when Nikos tried doing that, he he lost his MCV. He lost his refinery. He didn't even get to finish the gem over here. Anyways, here we go. Uh, this is going to be the last battle right here. He has desolators in these flags. He needs to play smart though. He can't just suicide the flags or else he's not going to have air defense for these rocketeers. There's the deso. Oh my god, that was a really good deso bomb actually. He sees these mirage. mirages are already at his red health. Just one hit and they'll pop. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't die. Oh man, such a close one. 
you see those decibel bombs can turn the tides around so fast on Allied. But like I said, he needs to have those flax. Rocketeers are just going to devour him now. Oh, here he comes. He's bringing some flax now. This is actually a really close game, so... Uh, I don't know. I think this is going to go for Mikos, actually. Yeah, this is... I don't think Marsh can recover from this. He has a lot of Rocketeers, though. If you play smart with these tanks, he can actually win. Rocketeers. Marsh must be rich. He just built another War Factory down here. Like I said, the more War Factories you have, the faster the production is. So he can defend himself pretty quick. Sending those Rocketeers to his base. He has no air defense in his base right now, so he's going to have to send Black Cracks back. Oh no. Well, that's a good game right here. He lost both of his War Factories and he doesn't have an MCD to make another War Factory, so... That's pretty much the end of it. It was a really close game. Like I said, these are all really close games. And that is his last tank right there. I have defeated. Two one in favor of Marsh so far. Very good play by both of them. They're both playing really good. So if this is anything like the last series, uh, this next game is going to go to Marsh. I mean, to Mikos. Mikos is Palacio, of course. So, and I'm I'm going to root for Mikos this next round, so that we can actually see a next game after this. It's not fun to see a 3-0 or 3-1 win. It's always good to see that 2-2 pressures on. You need to win this for the series, you know. Those type of games are always a little better. There's always a lot of controversy on who's the better players and who's done more. Uh, or throughout the years, like there's been really good players that just quit after like a couple years in, like 2002, 2003 who people nowadays still consider them legends. <clears throat> and I'm going to say that they were the top players at the time. Uh, throughout the time, though, this is already 2015, the game has evolved. People use different strategies. There's new maps. There's new everything. So <laughs> when it comes to saying who's the better players now, uh, the only way you can figure that out is by playing now. Um, Tommy, at one point, was a really good player. Tommy and Sash were definitely the top content contestants for the number one spot. Uh, Tommy ended up winning a lot more than Sash did. But now people say, you know, who was the best? Well, people say Marco, but Marco wasn't around when Tommy was playing all the time. And then Tommy came back and Marco ended up beating him. So who was the best at that time? Well, Marco was. And then Tim ended up playing and Tim and Marco were always really close. But Marco always, I think, ended up winning most of the series. Same thing with uh, Latov now. Uh, there's really nobody else that's as good as Latov, in my opinion. Because Marco and Tim stopped playing. Uh, I think that Latov is still worse than Marco, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, when Marco comes back, Every single time he just quits and comes back, he ends up giving uh, Latov a, a run for his money. He's actually beating him in series, and you know Latov plays a lot actually. And for Marco to just come back and beat him like that and then take off, uh, I still think that Marco's the best. But as far as allied players, uh, only two players really come to mind nowadays, 
and I'm gonna say that that's uh, Marsh and Adam. Uh, Adam obviously quit already, but Marsh is... I don't think he's still at that top level where Adam was. Adam was just really, really good. He was unstoppable at a point. Uh, the only times he actually lost were on like Soviet-based maps. And even then, um, he would win like against really good players like Marco himself. And yeah, a lot of people say that Adam only played Malibu. But the thing is, uh, there's there's a lot of arguing about those two players, Adam and Latov. Because Latov didn't ever want to play on Adam's maps, which he wanted to play. And Adam didn't want to play Latov on his maps. So... Uh, who's to say who was better on certain maps? They were always giving each other some good games. But they both played really good. Anyways, I'll be right back one second. Uh, I'll leave it right here because I think this is going to be the next battle. Alright, uh, I missed out on a lot here. Let's see what's going on. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven miners for Marsh. Looks like even amount of tanks so far, even, even amount of dogs. Crazy fight. So he had seven miners versus five miners. Oh, and he sold MCV, so. This is pushing hard. If Marsh can hold up a little bit longer, he actually wins this. But the pressure's too, too much, I think, for him. He's building defense items now, building toolboxes, making sure that he can defend himself pretty good. Okay. Really good tank control. He's targeting the tanks here so he doesn't kill the dogs. Incredibly hard sometimes you misclick your dog, ruins your hole. <sighs> really good. <laughs> Five, six, seven, seven pillboxes already down. It's gonna be really hard to go in here. It's like he's pretty much doing his last resort thing, bringing his miners. Miners are really good. Uh, Soviet miners are really good for pressuring in. They have a lot of armor and they actually shoot too, so they can be pretty good to hit the dogs. They have a pretty long distance. Just to control these tanks. These three tanks are like a little bit far out. Yeah, you saw that those dogs in the marsh just pretty much died. He's going for the flag, he's going for the flag. Save your flag! Oh my goodness. Got the flag, that means that he has to hold back now. 
Because these Rocketeers, this elite Rocketeer is just going to destroy him. Still has his miners down here. There's Vites. So now he's on three miners. He should probably sell this next War Factory. I don't think he's going to have enough money to pump them out. <laughs> Keep pumping uh, things out. Yeah, this is this is just too much. There's too much defense here. You already saw Miko's won like three, four tank battles, and you can't just close it out because there's just so much defense. And he's doing pretty much the same thing he did last time. He's sending his rocketeers just past all his tanks and going for his warfare. Seems like Miko's didn't learn his lesson last time. gonna be a close game again. Close series. 3-1. Not not as close as it should have been. But saw how close these games were actually were, so pretty much could have gone either way each game. Well, that's it for these guys. You're defeated. All right, uh, Latov has a game open. Uh, hopefully I can watch. He doesn't normally like people watching his games for some reason, unless he likes the person. And he really doesn't like anyone. He thinks he's too good for everyone, but maybe he can play uh, Mikos or Marsh and hopefully let me observe. I can probably commentate or try commentating the best I can on it. Let's ask him. Konazi. For all you know, he's probably watching the stream and just heard me, so he's probably not going to let me. I guess he's AFK. Yeah, Marco has always been the better player, in my opinion. <clears throat> Marco on his days now, or his days that he was playing, I think he was better than everyone else that I've ever played with throughout my years. He's really consistent. Really good. And the thing about him, the thing about Marco that I think a lot of people liked is that he was he was really modest, humble, uh, as opposed to Latov, who he thinks is he's pretty arrogant. He thinks he's the best. He is good. Can't take that away from him, but that's the difference. He thinks he can just talk shit to anyone because he's doing the best right now and everyone's beneath him. Tim's really cool about it too. He's really good.
I think he really wants to play me. I really do want to play him right now, but I'm over it. I'm over red alert right now. Really only want to watch a couple games. I'm probably going to get off here soon. All right, well, it looks like Mikos is going to play Latov now, and he didn't want to let us observe, like always. Like I said, uh, if had it been Marco, he would have opened Observer right away and let us all watch, but this guy thinks he's too good for everyone. So, anyways, on that note, I am going to head off now. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, I can work on my commentating a little bit better or more later on so I can get better. Uh, anyways, good games, everyone. Thanks for watching. See ya.